Hello to everyone and welcome for this coffee lecture today. I am happy to introduce you our presenter, Tanya Carter. She is medical information specialist at the team research support service of the medical library. And some among you may know her as project collaborator in systematic reviews, as lecturer in different curriculum courses or cost benefit of her profound skills as expert searchers during a consultation. Tanya will present 12 steps to a successful systematic review from research question to evidence. Yeah, thank you for this kind introduction. I'm happy to present you these 12 steps. So let's get started. Here we have the 12 steps at one glance. And yeah, some of them are interchangeable in order, but these are the main steps. We start with looking at the research question, then go to the scoping search and uh, to the study design decision. Then we talk about building a team and the protocol registration and of course the literature search. Then we go on to the screening of results, the data extraction, the quality assessment and the synthesis of research. And finally, we look at the interpretation of the results and how to report and publish the results. So step one, the research question. It's important to have a good research question. Otherwise, you run the risk of getting lost in the process. So the five W's are maybe a good place to start. So you might be interested in who, what, when, where, or why. And in addition, the question should fit to the final framework. This means it should be feasible, interesting, novel, ethical, and of course, relevant. Especially a systematic review requires a precisely formulated research question to enable its translation into a database search strategy. And already in this first step, it can be useful to have PICO or other question formats, like there are a lot of them, PO, PECO, and so on, to have in mind. My personal recommendation is think a bit like a database. That means in database fields and in concepts. And ask yourself already when formulating your question, how do authors write about your topic in scientific articles? Step two is the scoping research. Scoping searches allow you to explore your topic. This can be done through quick and dirty searches in Google Scholar or PubMed, or in one of the AI powered research tools like LitMaps or ResearchRabbit, and there are many more. Find the choice of AI tools on our website. And before you invest more of your valuable time, please check if someone else is already working on your topic. You can do so by taking a look at the registries for systematic reviews, where Prospero is the best known one. But there are others like OSF, Research Registry, Inplasy Protocols IO, or GBI for scoping reviews. Step three is about the study design decision. It is the research question that will determine which type of review you need to follow. So, so much in advance, it doesn't always have to be a systematic review that answers best your research question. In the picture here, you find a tree with different kinds of types of reviews ordered into families offered by the University Library of Melbourne. And on the, at the bottom of the slide, you find a link where they explain how to find the best review type for your research questions. I think it's worthwhile to take a look at this link if you're unsure which type of review you want to go for. In our daily work, we see many master students who conduct a systematic review on their own. For their work, that's fine, that's okay, but actually that's not the point of a real systematic review. The goal of a real systematic review is improve the evidence. And in order to reduce bias, the team needs to be composed of a variety of experts, like subject experts, method experts, or information specialists like me and my colleagues. And maybe you might need a statistician or even writing experts. So if you're interested in how to lead um, your team in a successfully way, there was a coffee lecture last semester, and I recommend you 
to look at the slides or the video of it if you're interested in this topic. Step five, the protocol registration. Before you start the project, we strongly recommend that you create a protocol. A protocol is kind of a research plan. It forces you to think about the project and its implementation in advance. It's also recommended to record the protocol in a register. This way, other researchers can see what you're working on and double work and research waste is avoided. Tanya Rivero, a colleague of mine, has created two different templates, one for Prospero and one for, for Prisma P, and they are on SciFlow. Uni B members, they have free access to this SciFlow. If you don't have access, just write us an email and we send you a document, a Word document with these templates. They're quite helpful. And again, there are different registers for protocol, Pres Prospero, as I mentioned. The problem with Prospero is that it gets more restrictive with accepting protocols. So maybe you will want to switch to one of the others listed here. And again, for scoping reviews, you can register them on JBI, the Joanna Briggs Institute. Step six is our main job here in the research support team of the medical library. The goal of a systematic review is to find all the relevant evidence on a research question in all the relevant sources of information. Therefore, you need a well-designed search strategy to find the evidence across different databases, clinical trial registries, or even in the gray literature. Gray literature means this is unpublished literature like thesis sometimes or leaflets, booklets, and the like. As it is true for scientific work in general, your search must be systematic, transparent, and reproducible. For a real systematic review, we recommend to search in at least three databases. And because there are some intersection, you need to duplicate the records. But um, don't worry, those steps we can do for you. So just contact us if you need help with this. And even if required, we update your search before you're publishing. Then when you get the results, all the hits, then step seven is to screen the records. You can do this in reference management or screening tools or even in Excel. Typically, you start by looking at titles and abstracts and then move on to the full text screening. This process of including and excluding studies should be documented in a Prisma flowchart. We've already had some talks about those tools that help you with the screening. You find them at the bottom of the slide here again, if you want to have a look at them. Step eight is data extraction. Once all the items have been screened, it is important to collect the exploitable data from them. Especially if you're doing a quantitative review, the data needs to be comparable. You can find them in sources, in outcomes, in study designs, in the number of participants, in the results, and so on. Cochrane offers a free template for data extraction, or if you work with Covidence, there's an integrated form for this process, for this step two. And especially to the UNIB members, because they have access to the licensed Cochrane Interactive Learning course, I recommend to look at it, to take this course or to attend this course. It walks you through the whole process in much more detail than I can do now in this brief coffee lecture. Step nine is the quality assessment and appraisal. In this step, the quality of the studies to be included is assessed in order to avoid bias and make statements about the relevance and trustworthiness of the studies. There are several checklists that help you to do so. I really like to draw your attention to last week's coffee lecture for this step, um, unveiling bias going beyond the study types. My colleague talked about the latitude network, which helps you to choose these tools according to the study types you're interested in. So this might help you to not get lost in these different checklists and tools. Then it's already step 10. It's about synthesizing and analyzing the data. 
Cochrane describes this as a process of bringing together data from a set of included studies with the aim of drawing conclusions about the body of evidence. This will include syntheses of study characteristics and potentially statistical synthesis of study findings. So this means if you plan to make a meta-analysis, analysis, it's here in step 10 where this is done. More information about this step can be found in the Cochrane Handbook and especially in chapter nine. The penultimate step is to interpret the findings. Are they applicable for your field of research? Are they generalizable and valid? And are they transferable? And of course, what are the conclusions? And here again, you can take a look at the Cochrane Handbook, especially to chapter 15, where um, help and guidance is offered. Finally, you've got your review and you report it and hopefully publish your review. You write about the background, the methods, the results, have a discussion about your results and draw some conclusions. And in the past, we had several coffee lectures with useful tips for the writing process, like using ChatGPT or the SciFlow tool I've already mentioned. There are talks about designing figures and tables or tips to improve scientific writing or how to use references in your scientific articles. And additionally, our two academic writing experts, they offer a variety of courses for academic writing and you find them on our courses page. So this was a very quick run through the steps of a systematic review. However, if you need assistance, we're happy to help. You can take a 24 seven look at the systematic researching guide on our website, um, where you find everything about systematic searching and general information about stud, um, review types and systematic review. Or on the other hand, there is our uh, medicine and pharmacy portal where you find all our services, including one-on-one -on -one support and our courses, and of course, contact detail, how to reach out to us. I've told you about 12 steps, but of course you're free to take as many steps as you like. Um, for instance, 24. And if you want to take it or to make it in 24 steps, then I re recommend you this short paper, this guide from Bernice um, researchers. It's a 24 step guide on how to design, conduct and successfully publish a systematic review and meta analysis in medical research. This is just for your information. So I hope this walkthrough was helpful to you. And as you could see, there are many links in my presentation. So if you just take a minute with your smartphone, you can scan the QR code or um, type in the link below and it will take you to this presentation. And there on this website, you find our screencast from previous lectures too and the whole coffee lecture program. So thank you very much for your time and attention. And now I'm curious of your questions or discussion about your experiences with conducting systematic reviews. Thank you very much.